Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna jump into my wheel strategy. I think this is update number three, episode number three. So as many of you know, I put on the wheel strategy one time about a month ago, and it was a put, a naked put. It expired worthless, I kept the premium, and I repeated that process. I put on another naked put in Novavax, that expired this last Friday. So what happened was it expired in the money. So what that means is now we don't rinse and repeat. We actually get assigned the shares and we move on to step two of the wheel, which is selling the covered call once you've been put 100 shares of the stock per one contract that you sold. So I'm excited to show this to you today because I had to, I had to make the trade this morning. I wasn't able to film it, but of course I've got the options chain and the activity log so I can show it to you. But I wanna show you what I was thinking, why I chose the strike that I did, and I'm gonna show you how much premium I received to sell this contract. Now what's interesting about today's episode of The Wheel Strategy is it's only a five day contract. Right now, there are three days left because I actually sold it on Monday. So three days remaining now, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If it expires on Friday above my strike, I will lose the shares, keep the premium, and then we will start the whole process over. I will begin with selling another naked put next week in Novavax, and I'm gonna update you on that as well. So let's dive into the trading platform and let me show you exactly what I did to get assigned the shares and how I put on this covered call. Let's dive in. All right, everyone, let's dive into this. I've got Invax, which is Novavax Inc., up on my Tastyworks platform. And if you want a Tastyworks platform, hit the link in the description and the channel will get a credit for it. But sign up for an account, fund it with $2,000, and that'll help the channel out. And I really appreciate that. So diving into Novavax. So what I said last time was that, let's go to the chart here. So I had a $175 strike on Novavax, and it was a put, a naked put. And Novavax actually finished up at 174.41 on Friday night. So it actually expired because it was below 175. Now, if we remember what a naked put is, a naked put is just the ability, but not the obligation for someone to sell me shares at $175, which happened. I got exercised and I received the 175 shares. So I now have 100 shares of Novavax. And through the weekend, I was kind of planning on how am I going to approach this on Monday when the market's open and I need to now go ahead and sell the covered call. If you don't know what a covered call is, I'll put a video here. You can check that out. But it's pretty simple and it's kind of um, opposite of the put. But this is a covered call because I already own the shares. If I didn't own the shares, this would be called a naked call. And now what happened was on Monday, markets opened up and I was looking at my trade tab, and this had five days remaining. So I, I had uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So Monday, when I had this open, I was looking right at the money, which at the time was just below 175, and I was able to get about $5 on that. And so what I thought I would do, instead of going out, and let me, instead of going out to like, 10 days or 12 days or 14 days, I decided to tuck it up really close because the premium was that good. Now remember, I like to try to get um, two to three percent um, premium, two to three percent on the price of the stock. So if a stock is $100, that means I wanna get between two and three dollars premium for a very short term option. And I mean like one to two weeks. Because if we sell a really short term option for the wheel strategy and you get breached or something bad happens, you can roll and you can pump the position full of extrinsic value. Extrinsic value is just time. Now, if you sell something further out, like 45 days out, and immediately you get breached, it's hard to roll from there because you already have so much extrinsic value already pumped into the options position. So if I open this up, I'll show you exactly what happened. So I'm gonna to go to, first of all, just go to my um, activity panel. And you can see that on June 4th, we sold a 135 put for $5.10. And that's on a 100 share position, so that's $510. And then it expired worthless, so we just rinsed and repeat. We did the same thing on June 18th. We sold the 175 put and we sold it for $515. 
We waited for expiration and we almost got it. We were 59 cents shy, but we ended up getting put the shares. So now we need to come out and we need to sell the covered call. Now with covered calls, I like to be super aggressive because I don't care if it gets called away because there's no downside if the stock goes higher. So for me, yes, I don't capture big moves to the upside. I'm capping my, my potential to the upside. But what I'm doing is I'm able to collect a lot bigger credit because I'm closer to the money. So that way, if the stock drops on me, I'll be gaining more credit because let's say I only had a dollar premium and the stock drops really hard against me. I would realize that whole dollar possibly. But what if I sold it for $8? Then as the stock drops, I would try to realize that $8. So the more premium you can ha you have, the more you're reducing your cost basis on the overall position. And that's what I was after. So I went ahead and I sold the June 25th, $175 covered call for $5. So that's $500 credit and it has three days to go. This was only a five dollar a five day position. These positions were, I think the first one was a 10 day position and the second one might have been an 11 day position, I believe. But this one is a five day position and I'm collecting almost the same credit. So the covered call is very, very powerful. But the thing that you have to understand is you actually own the share. So you're actually holding a little more risk because if it goes down against you, you're going to lose value on the shares while you gain value on your calls. But you still own those shares. So you do have that risk there. So what I want to do now is just talk a little bit about the options chain within Tastyworks. It's really helpful and it's right here. If I click chains and I have it filtered out 180 days. So in the last 180 days, you can see that I've collected that 510, the 515 and the $5. But what's nice about this is it keeps me up to date on how much premium I've actually sold so that I would know my cost basis if I decided for some reason to keep the shares. So right now, I've collected $1,525, which is $15.25. So what you can do is you can actually take that and you could go to the chart and I could say, okay, I own the shares at 175, but if I reduce it by that $15 and change, it's almost like I own it for 159.75. If I take 175 minus 1525, you'll get the cost basis reduction. So even if I end up with these shares and it goes down to 170 or 168 or 165, I'm still net positive on the position because of cost basis reduction. So that's why this is so powerful because after you could kind of see the trend, if we continue to do this over time, at some point we are going to basically own shares for free. So let's say we've collected $175 in premium and we buy shares at $175. We bought the shares, but because we've already collected $175 per share, we basically own the stock for free. There's no downside risk other than losing profits you already have. It's sort of like going to Vegas and winning $100 and then making a $100 bet. If you lose that bet, you don't lose. You just lose the house's money. You're playing with the house's money. So yes, you can lose some of what you've gained, but ultimately you can't go net negative on it because you've already collected because the stock can't go below zero. So that's the beautiful thing about cost basis reduction with covered calls and selling puts. Now, when you sell the naked puts in the same underlying, that being Novavax, you can collect these credits that will apply to any position you put on in Novavax. So if I sell 10 puts in a row and I collect $5 on each one of them, then that $5,000 I've collected, the next time I buy Novavax, I can sort of loosely say, well, I can take a $5,000 loss on Novavax and still be break even on it. So it's super powerful. And watch that covered call video because that's really helpful in explaining how this all works. But where we find ourselves now, let's do a little update. Let's go to my positions tab. Let's open this up. You can see here are my 100 shares. So when you sell a covered call in Novavax, you can kind of see on Tastyworks, you can see your position, you can see your shares, and you can see the contract. So my contract right now is June 25th, one contract, $175, and C is for call. Now you might be looking at this number saying, whoa, Jimmy, you're down $1,525. And that's true, I am. If, because technically, 
covered calls, a call wins if the stock goes lower. But the stock has gone higher and you can see, you can see it's gone higher freakishly, $13.50 today. We've had a massive move up. So if you sold a put, this would be an amazing day for you. But because I have the call, it's actually creating a losing position for me right here. But here's the kicker. I already own the shares. So this really isn't a loss that I'm going to realize because the worst thing that happens is if I have to get, if I get a sign and have to lose my shares, then I just lose the shares at that price and I already own the shares. So I'm not going to lose anything. So what this will do is when this expires in three days, this loss will just dissolve and evaporate. I will lose my shares, but because I bought the shares at 175 and I'm selling them at 175, I don't lose on it. And some of you might say, well, why didn't you sell a covered call higher so that you could not only keep the premium, but also keep the difference between 175 and let's say 180. And the reason I didn't do that is because I couldn't get the five day contract to work out to be worthwhile. The credit was too small and I'm not convinced or don't know that Novavax is going to go higher. So if I sell the 180 call for $2, and then Novavax drops on me, I just spent a week earning $200 and now I have shares that are lower. So you can't predict this. If I would have known the shares were gonna go to 13, you know, go up $13, I'd have probably sold the 195s and you know, taken a smaller credit but made a lot of money on the movement of the stock. So what's very interesting is that naked calls are bearish positions, but covered calls are both sort of bearish and bullish. They call them a bullish position because you can win on the upside twice if you let the option contract expire. You can also win once on the downside because if the stock drops, the value of your call is gonna go up. So if all of a sudden Novavax dropped to 160, I would be probably earning all this $5 back. This loss would evaporate, but I'd then have a loss on this line for the shares because the cost of the shares, the value of the shares would have gone down. So it's kind of a yin and yang. It kind of tugs on it on itself. So when you have a covered call on, you might think to yourself, boy, my P&L doesn't look very good. What's going on? But you don't have to worry about that because if you get to expiration, this will evaporate because all that happens is you keep the premium and you lose the shares. So if I open up my accounts tab here, you can see that year to date in this account, we've made $1,484.86 and we've made $200.86 today. So what I'm gonna do real quick is a calculation and I'm gonna look at what we've made, $1,484.86. And let's go ahead and divide that by 17,000 because that's the initial deposit we put in the account. So 17,000, so we've already made, I'm gonna multiply that by 100. We've already made 8.73% in this account and it's been about a month. So this has looked really, really good. And one thing you might notice that I haven't addressed yet is that you're seeing larger numbers over here, 25,000 and 51,000. I'm gonna update you guys on what's going on there, but I decided to transfer some more money into this account so that I can look for another potential wheel candidate and be having, and, and then have two wheels going at the same time. Um, I'm not doubling up on Novavax necessarily because it's good for risk management to sort of spread things out. So I want to find another candidate that I like and then I can start wheeling that one alongside with Novavax and probably have something that's not in biotech. I'll have Invax, which is biotech, and then I'll find some other player that's not in the, in the biotech space. So if you know of any stocks that look good for this wheel strategy, hit me up, drop me a message, let me know in the comment section because I am looking for another candidate. So I hope this video was helpful. This is the wheel strategy, my wheel account. This is episode number three, updating you. On Friday, we'll see if we expire. We'll find out if we don't expire, we'll keep the 100 shares and we'll rinse and repeat next week. But I'll update you as things come along. And if you have any questions, drop in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.